Hey everybody, so I am back at it tonight with the Coolant Proof GoPro case. Uh, where we left off, we were uh, test fitting the GoPro on here and it didn't quite fit right. And so I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to Herudin, Herudin, sorry dude, I do not know how to say your name, but I do want to say thank you so much. Um, in the last video, you left um, some really good dimensions in the comments. Um, to be honest, we're going to see how good those dimensions are tonight. But I have full faith in you and I super appreciate you helping me out. Um, everything that you had looks like it's right, um, just based off of how far off I am and just kind of visually looking at the camera and everything and kind of playing around with the CAD. I think it's going to be solid, so I'm super excited just to fix the, the pocket where the uh, lens sits and then we'll move on to OP2. All right, she's ready to rock out. I've got my half inch end mill in. I've got my uh, piece mounted right here. All we are really doing is making this one hole a little bit less round and a little bit more like a peanut. So it should be pretty quick. And I've got my cam loaded right there. Looking at this now, um, no reason that I need to helix all that in. The material's already gone. But this is a 10 minute op, I think. And it's gonna take me 10 minutes to go inside, fix it get distracted on YouTube, that sort of thing, and then come back out. So I am just gonna run it while it's ready to go and suck up the 10 minutes, no big deal. All right, so there she is. I am going to skip the saran wrap because I don't want to mess with it. And that is how confident I am in these measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out, just dump it out. Um, that way I don't have to use air and try to blast that whole puddle um, all over my garage. Just dump it out, go inside, rinse it off, and then I will be back for the test fit. All right, here we go, folks. No fake reactions here. I have not tried to put this in here yet, but I cleaned it out. All right, let's try this out. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, but the hole on the left there, or pocket on the left, is a bit egg-shaped, like it should be. So let's go ahead and try her out. Oh, it dropped right in. So now, so it is teetering a little bit. I'm not sure it's fully seating, like the camera itself. But I think that's going to work because it doesn't need to be like a super snug fit. It just needs to not move around, which it has zero play. So yeah, you can actually set it up right there and the camera doesn't fall out. I think we are good. Beautiful. Look at that. And then it drops right out. Nice. And then if you put it in this way, I was kind of playing around with it this direction to see how well I had measured and got, well, I didn't really measure, but um, how well the, the GrabCAD model was for the outline of the camera. And you can see, um, I really like that there's a gap right here, like this thing, even when I'm holding it facing down right now, like it doesn't want to fall down. So this thing sits suspended basically just off that front little lip. So my plan is to put some type of foam or something on the back plate that's going to screw on here and that way it won't be just hanging on the front like a cantilever it'll have a little bit of support here just soft cushion so that it can't go anywhere and it's it's mounted so there you have it next step we got to do op two let's get all this junk off of here and, and get this plate done that'd be awesome all right, so we are touched off and ready to go for op two. So before I got too far into this one, I wanted to show you guys what I was doing here. Um, I needed to touch off on the bottom or on the top of the parallel, bottom of the part, 
So what I did is I just stuck my parallel out sideways and it was enough room to get my Heimer down without hitting the part with the Heimer because that would be bad. And then I did run into one thing I didn't think about was I was going to touch off on this side of the part here. And then I thought, oh, it's no big deal. I'll just touch off on the, the side of the vise uh, on the jaw there. And so I, I lined everything up. I just set a parallel here, set this up here, touched it, uh, and then tightened the vise. And I thought everything would be fine. I ended up having to get a little Western with it and run a parallel alongside here so that I could touch off on that parallel. But in the end, I think it'll work. Um, honestly, the dimensions on this top part aren't super critical. So I think I'm gonna roll with it how it is. I think I'm really close. I'm within a few thou, so it should be fine. Um, but I just thought I'd show you my kind of odd way of touching off. Um, it, it got a little weird, uh, got out of hand. So I get that adaptive tool pads aren't for everything, but sometimes they are pretty cool just to leave as the roughing strategy. Check this out. There you have it after decking off all of that, that extra material. I think it's pretty cool so far. Now we got to chamfer it and drill a couple of the holes for that little plate that's going to go over the top right here. So yeah, silky smooth. I eh, can feel a little ridge right there, but... For the most part, you can't feel any of that, but you see it. That's pretty cool. All right, I think I can officially call Op 2 done. Check it out. We've got the chamfer around the sides. We've got, kind of hard to see, but four little holes that are going to get tapped to 440 for the plate to go on that holds the glass in here. So everything's all machined down. Now here is one of the little glass plates. I got these from McMaster. And I would love to set this in here and have it fit perfectly, just like that. And it's got a little bit of wiggle, but that's okay. It's gonna get some type of sealant in there. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, but I'd be lying to you if I said that I just machined that and it fit perfect. I ended up going in and having to change my code to take out about five thou per side. So open it up about 10 thou. Um, my part was about six thou under just going off of um, cutter comp in the fusion, not on the machine. And then this part was like two thou over from McMaster. 
So I took off a little bit extra um, so that I could just slip it in there and it would be nice and easy. Oh no, my camera's dying. Let's get this thing off the machine. Red blinky battery light. Let's go. Gotta see it. All right, while well, she's still recording, here it is, folks. So I am super happy with this. So from here, check it out next time. Uh, I will be making the next part for this, either the front plate or the back. I haven't quite decided yet. But until then, I will see you next time.